Margot Robbie is one of the most acclaimed and coveted actresses working in Hollywood today. She can go from the superhero genre to the Oscar crowd pleaser like it's nobody's business. But there's more to the Australian actress than just good looks and acting, and a lot of it may actually surprise you. The Legend of Tarzan starred some very attractive people, namely Margot Robbie and her leading man-ape Alexander Skarsgård. The two play the iconic Tarzan and Jane from the old Victorian novels in this film adaptation, which takes place after the events of the typical films like Disney's Tarzan. Naturally, the two are married in the film, and thus get a steamy scene together. Now, with Tarzan being a character who grew up in the wild, he can get a primal from time to bed, especially in bed. Director David Yates didn't want Jane to be overpowered, so he instructed Robbie to either punch or slap Skarsgård during their scene together. Only Robbie full-on decked him in the face and actually left a mark on the leading man. Talk about getting into the scene! Despite all the action in the film, Yates stated that the scene was likely the only one to cause physical harm to an actor on set. When the marketing for Suicide Squad kicked off, many fans instantly gravitated towards Margot Robbie's portrayal of Harley Quinn. She seemed to instantly capture the charm and crazy that has made the character so beloved with fans. But Robbie was initially not too jazzed about playing her. Citing her bizarre obsession with the Joker, who constantly abuses her, Robbie was confused about Harley as a character. But once she did some research on codependence and Red Fool for Love, she was able to understand her more and gave the highlight performance of the film. She was so good, in fact, she's getting her own spin-off film titled Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Quite the title. There's also talks of a Joker and Harley spin-off film and a Gotham City Sirens. And you can't forget she'll likely be back for Suicide Squad 2, which will be co-written by James Gunn. In one sequence in Suicide Squad, Harley and Joker get rammed underwater by Batman, and the actress found herself submerged underwater. Filming underwater sequences isn't terribly hard these days, with the use of stunt doubles and CGI to get the job done. But Robbie was having none of that. She actually worked with a free diver for the scene and learned how to hold her breath for the whole scene. In fact, she was able to hold her breath for around five minutes by the time she was ready to shoot the scene. Talk about going above and beyond for a small moment in the film. Robbie states that the talent has now become her new party trick. Perhaps one day we'll see her in an underwater movie where she can really show off those skills. Harley and Aquaman 2, anyone? Changing and maintaining one's body weight is a common concern for Hollywood actors. They often go through rigorous transformations, or are told they have to maintain a certain weight in order to be more desirable for various parts. While it's no secret Margot Robbie doesn't look like she needs help in the health department, she actually puts her own body image first, and not what the film dictates she has to have. Case in point, The Legend of Tarzan. She actually refused to drop her body weight for the role, something you don't hear about often in Hollywood. The real reason for this decision? It was her first time filming in England, and Robbie wanted to hit pubs whenever possible. She was able to convince the studio execs that a Victorian lady wouldn't have looked like a supermodel anyway, and she won her case and, hopefully, proceeded to the nearest pub immediately. Harley is certifiably crazy and plays a big part in Suicide Squad, but the drive to do something crazy carried over to Margot's real life on the set of the DCEU film. She decided to take up tattooing her fellow cast members when the cameras weren't rolling, despite not being experienced in the craft. She would tattoo the word squad intentionally miswritten as SKWAD, but Margot's career as a part-time tattooist sort of kicked off to a bad start when she actually botched her first tattoo on a cast assistant named Simon. His tattoo, while you Unique spells SWAD instead. Perhaps that's why Joel Kinnaman opted to have Will Smith do his tattoo instead. Director David Ayer couldn't resist poking fun at the typo and made an appropriately funny post on Twitter. But hey, at least she tried something new. Margot Robbie can seemingly play it all, and 2018 saw her tackle the historical genre by portraying Queen Elizabeth I in the film Mary Queen of Scots. The film is a retelling of the events that saw Mary Stuart trying to overthrow her cousin Queen Elizabeth. Despite the rich history and interesting characters, Robbie actually almost turned it down. Despite being an acclaimed actress, Robbie actually felt like she didn't deserve the role, and that there were better actresses out there who would be much better in portraying Queen Elizabeth I. The reason for this belief was that Robbie didn't go to university university or drama school, and she believed that in order to play such a historical figure, you needed classical education, and that she wasn't in the same league as former Elizabeth actresses Kate Blanchett or Judi Dench. But she took the role, and is getting award buzz for her performance. 
After leaving her acting career in Australia behind, Robbie moved to the United States seeking to break into mainstream Hollywood. After landing a small part in About Time, she landed an audition in an upcoming Martin Scorsese film called The Wolf of Wall Street, which, as we know, stars Leonardo DiCaprio. Way to hit the ground running, Margot! Unlike Suicide Squad, which saw the role of Harley Quinn be offered to her, she had to audition for Wolf, as she was virtually unknown stateside. So how do you impress one of the greatest directors of all time as an unknown when you're standing next to Leo. Well, because her audition was the scene where she and Leo fight, she hit Leo really hard. She actually thought her career was over and that the studio would press charges, but Leo and Martin laughed it off, and Leo even told her to do it again. Despite her supermodel appearance, being in touch with her feminine side isn't something Robbie is particularly good at, the actress states. There's no doubt that Margot Robbie is one of the most beautiful actresses working in Hollywood today, and she can rock any dress on the red carpet. But that's not where she feels the most comfortable. Like most of us, Margot Robbie is more comfortable wearing a pair of Converse and sporting a t-shirt and shorts she can. She says she prefers being grungy and edgy in her appearance, and tries to buy Australian brands for her everyday wear, supporting the country of her birth. We think it's it's pretty cool that Robbie is so comfortable being down to earth and is proud to wear clothes that we can all relate to. I, Tonya was a critical darling and one of Robbie's best performances, netting her another Oscar nomination and winning the Critics' Choice Award for her portrayal of Tonya Harding, a competitive figure skater in the 90s. Now, figure skating can already be tricky enough, especially when you're emulating the kind of stuff you'd see on the competitive level. But Robbie was actually injured during the production with a herniated disc in her neck. Unfortunately for her, she was also a producer on the film and couldn't back out, so had to complete the shoot, having to check in for an MRI every week to make sure she was okay to film the following week. Not only did she give great skating scenes, but one heck of a performance. Being an actor is hard stuff. Not only is there the time commitment of rehearsing and memorizing lines, but there's a fitness regime and diet to follow. And that's just scratching the surface of an actor's life. For superhero roles like Suicide Squad, studios expect their actors to be looking fit, and that requires a hearty and, well, boring diet. But once the production is finished, Robbie is having none of that healthy stuff. She actually loves junk food like the rest of us, and says she'd prefer to have some beer and french fries when she's not required to look the part on screen. But when it's time to look slim, it's carrot sticks for days, she says. That's two very different extremes, but we're glad Robbie can do what makes her happy on the off days. Margot Robbie is an Oscar-nominated actress, superheroine, and celebrity A-lister. She can also add producer to her impressive resume. Along with Tom Ackerley, Josie McNamara, and Sophia Kerr, she's opened and running Lucky Chap Entertainment, a production company that will take care of Robbie's upcoming commitments in film. So far, the company has produced I, Tonya, Terminal, and the upcoming film Dreamland, with more on the way, including Barbed Wire Heart, which is not expected to have Robbie on screen. It'll also likely produce many of Robbie's upcoming pictures, giving the actress more control over the film she's involved in. We know that the company is overseeing Birds of Prey and Gotham City Sirens, and will also be producing a film for Mattel that Robbie will be starring in. Perhaps one day we'll see Robbie accepting a Best Picture award for her productions. They say never judge a book by its cover, and the same can be applied for Margot Robbie. You may not know it by looking at her, but Robbie is actually a pretty fit person. She loves hockey and genuinely enjoys sports. When she was younger, she actively practiced gymnastics as well. That last bit would come in handy when she was cast as Harley Quinn. You know those trapeze scenes in the film? Yeah, that's not a stunt double or CGI character. Robbie did it all herself. In fact, she did most of her own stunts, with producer Andy Horowitz stating Robbie's stunt double more or less relaxed for the duration of the production. It must be easy money being Margot Robbie's stunt double, and we can't wait to see what kind of stunts she brings to future DCEU films. Margot Robbie became a household name seemingly overnight thanks to her breathtaking performance in The Wolf of Wall Street. Despite being a newcomer to Hollywood, Robbie wasn't terribly shy about making a statement and bared it all for the camera on her first major role in Hollywood. But Robbie only did the scene because she felt it's what the character would have done and felt it was an important moment in the film. So, when Hugh Hefner approached Margot Robbie about doing a photo shoot for Playboy, asking for that one from Wolf of Wall Street, she turned him down. Despite the offer, of a big paycheck, citing that doing a nude scene for artistic purposes is something she's willing to do, but to bear it on for a magazine has no value creatively, despite not being shy about her body. 
Margot Robbie consistently is surprising Hollywood, and she continued to do that with the announcement that she will star and produce an upcoming Barbie movie. Barbie has always been something of a controversial toy, with many accusing the doll's proportions of being unrealistic. But Robbie isn't letting the toy's sometimes controversial past get in the way of her production. She cited that the toy encourages curiosity, confidence, and communication, and is eager to showcase that on film. With Barbie taking on over 150 roles in her shelf time, including President of the United States and a princess, the world really is Barbie's oyster when Robbie brings her to the big screen. Robbie also promises that the film will have a positive impact on both children and the general audience once it comes out, and will hold her to that promise. The film is scheduled to release in 2020. The turning point for Margot Robbie's career was when she landed the co-starring role in Martin Scorsese's acclaimed film The Wolf of Wall Street. The film was full of A-listers, including Leo, Jonah Hill, Matthew McConaughey, and Kyle Chandler, for instance. But no one really knew who Margot was at the time. But she definitely hit the ground running and went through the ringer for the role. She decided to do a full nude scene, thinking it suited the character better than having her appear in a robe. She also got a slew of paper cuts on her back during her intimate scene with Liam where she's lying on a bed of money. She also accidentally kicked Leo in the face during the infamous heel-on-face scene. Despite the nerves and scars, the role was a huge turning point for Robbie. So, did Margot Robbie surprise you with some of the entries on this list? Will you look at her in a new light now? Or does an actor's personal life have no bearing on your enjoyment of their films? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in your playlist every day. Thanks for watching.